Number two, I don't support I don't support Donald Trump because I think that he uh, outside of the narcissism, I think he would be on a vengeance tour and I don't think he would be about governing. I think he would be about having power and, and complete oh, dominion. And I think it would be pretty close to a damn aut autocracy. That's what I feel. How could someone like Stephen A. Smith be so smart and successful, but ignorant at the same time? So in this video, we're going to break it all down. Welcome back to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You already know what to do, like, share, and subscribe to this channel so we can push this video out to more people just like you and me. Stephen A. Smith, very successful by the way, at the top of his game in the sports commentary world. Will Kane, on the other hand, works for Fox News, also used to work for ESPN as well. They've been friends for a very long time. And so that brings us to this video today. Will Kane goes on to the Stephen A. Smith podcast and they talk about none other than President Trump. And Stephen A. Smith just shows you how ignorant with the statements and the beliefs that he holds when it comes to this election and President Trump. So before I get any deeper into that, let's play the video. Stephen A., you know me for a while. I, I was open back on ESPN on first take. We talked about Donald Trump. I did not. I was not a supporter. And I've changed my opinion of Donald Trump. Um, over time. And I think human beings should be. Did you really? Did you did you I, really? Or is it just that you ain't going to vote liberal? Did you really change it? Or is it just that no. you're not going to vote liberal? That's all. You only got two choices. Fair question. No, no. I'm going to tell you why. OK, I'm going to tell you. The, I want to be 100 percent honest. I'm going to tell you what happened. First of all, I'm going to be real with you. Sitting with you and Max on that day to day basis on first day was probably the beginning. I thought, and I'm not coming after you individually, and I said it to Max on air, I do not like the way you keep vilifying supporters of Donald Trump. I don't like the way you turn everything into not just an attack on Trump, but the people that support I never, Trump. I never did that. I know. I know. Yeah, I never I did that. that. I never I never I never get it to supporters of I I never did that. You did that was that was an argument between you and Max. I didn't like the reaction to Donald Trump at the time. And I had to be careful, like, don't react to the reaction, Will. And then I started to see a lot of the stuff they said about Trump just wasn't true. Like the very fine people thing, Stephen A., it's just not true. He never called Nazis very fine people. He just didn't do it. All you have to do is play that clip 60 seconds longer and you'll hear him say, I'm not talking about white supremacists. So all that started to break down. And then I saw the effect of the policies. Second, Stephen A., I'm like, going pretty good. And I liked the way he changed Republicanism. I liked that he focused more on middle class, that he focused on blue collar workers, that he focused on the forgotten middle American. I liked that. And then finally, third, I, I'm not saying I know him, but I have been around him on several occasions. And here's the truth. If you just want to know the truth, he's really, really likable. He's a likable guy. And mm -hmm. um, between those three things, I had moved from someone who said when I sat with you at a desk in 2016, Donald Trump's all about himself mm -hmm. to where I sit here today and I support him as a unique and individual candidate, not just as a reaction to the left. I don't think Stephen A. Smith has ever taken the time to actually sit down with President Trump in the recent time frame, like in the last. I think he said that the last time he he actually saw him was back in, before he even ran for president. So before 2016. So when you're a person who's very critical of someone and you have the ability to actually sit down with them or have a conversation and you don't. Yeah, I would call you a, a, an, an ignorant person for sure, because that means you don't understand how to truly get down to what the truth is. Right. And like Will Cain was saying, he actually did his research. He started to look at the results he did get around him. He doesn't know him personally, but he was around him enough to know this is not the guy that the media has been saying is his dictator and racist and, and bigot and all this crazy stuff that, you know, the media likes to make up. So listen, don't judge a book by its cover, especially when that cover is being branded and marketed by the media. Now let's hear what Stephen A. Smith has to say. Well, let me let me say this before I move on. I consider him the ultimate narcissist. Uh, but I've never 
Um, I've never castigated Trump supporters. I don't buy into that game. You're an American citizen. You got the right to vote for whoever you want to. And I can't stand the second you different, you think differently than somebody wants you to think all of a sudden you're, you're, you're everything negative outside, uh, but the child of God for crying out loud. It's ridiculous. And I, and I don't, I don't subscribe to that. That's number one. Number two, I don't support, I don't support Donald Trump because I think that he's uh, outside of the narcissism. I think he would be on a vengeance tour and I don't think he would be about governing. I think he would be about having power in, in complete oh, dominion and I think it would be pretty close to a damn aut autocracy that's what I feel that's what no. I feel having said that one of the biggest reasons I wanted you on today Will is because yeah. over the last week or so I've had Democrats on the show and, I, and I'm not about that. You know me. I listen to all sides. And I wanted conservatives and Republicans out there to know, just like if I'm going to have liberals on this show, I'm going to have conservatives on this show. And I'm going to treat them with the same respect and I'm going to ask the same kind of questions. And I'm going to play devil's advocate as best as I possibly can because fairness is a very, very big thing to me. That's what I feel. He scares me, Will. He Come scares on. me. And I know that we should say, hey, you could you could look at some of the things happening outside. I'm not down with the woke culture. I think it's going. I, I'm not about the fringes. I don't like extremes on the right or the left. I'm a centrist. That's me. Who's going to come closer to the center? That's really what it comes down to for me. And I don't trust him. Will. I don't trust. OK. Him. OK. So you guys seen that, right? Woke culture. OK. So let me get this straight. Stephen A. Smith, you oppose woke culture. But you're still to, you're still going to go vote for the person who's been advocating for woke culture. Tell me how that makes sense. This is why I'm saying he's smart, but ignorant at the same time. There are so many people like this in America. It's pretty sad that they complain about the policies. They complain about the woke mind virus, but they're still going to go out there and vote and advocate and support the same damn people who's put these things in our society to begin with. It just doesn't make any sense. And then the second point about, I'm a centrist, I want someone who's closer to the center. Are you serious? You think Kamala Harris is closer to the center? She was known as the most liberal senator in Congress. Besides Bernie Sanders, and yes, there are receipts, she voted and supported Medicare for all. So don't come over here with that. But they would have you believe, yeah, she's near the center. Give me a break. OK, she's not. And the Democrat Party is so far from the center. It's frightening. But you know who is closer to the center? President Trump. You think President Trump is a classic Republican? He is not. You think he's a hardcore conservative? No, he is not. And we know this to be true because Utah hates him. Mitt Romney hates him. Why? Because he's not fully conservative like they are. He's probably the most moderate Republican running for president. But of course, they're not going to talk about that, are they? Because they don't want to talk about the facts. They want to talk about how they feel. I feel, I feel, I feel. That's exactly what he said during this interview. I feel like he's going to be a dictator on day one. Just because you feel that way doesn't make it true. And by the way, here's a little mindset advice. Usually if you feel bad about something, one or two things are true. Number one, you're holding on to a limiting belief. Or number two, you might be wrong with the way that you're thinking. Because it's your thoughts that cause your feelings. So if you're thinking negatively and you're thinking about the worst case scenario, of course you're going to feel that way. And by the way, not just you thinking it, but if that's all you hear from your other liberal friends, then that's what you'll believe because you didn't even have the discipline or the professionalism to go out there and confront the person yourself. But this is the time that we live in. No one wants to do their research. They want to get caught up in feelings and vote from that place and speak from that place. We're all about the facts over here, okay? The facts are the Democrat Party is so far from the center, it's frightening. And in case you need a visual to truly understand what I just said, let's take a look at this. Okay, check this out. Look at 2008. All right, 2008 is when President Obama was elected, right? He defeated Hillary Clinton. Do you guys recall that? Right when the housing crisis happened and the banks got bailed out, which I'm about to go down on a ramp, but I digress. 
Uh, my fellow liberal was left. And I would consider myself this right here, by the way. Um, that was me. I was left center. Then 2012 rolls around. And um, we know by that time, the President Obama supported uh, gay marriage, supported LGBTQ uh, plus. And um, so, yeah, he went really left. Okay. But I still stayed where I was at. 2021 rolls around. COVID. Oh, now look at where I am. I'm past the center going towards conservatism. And look where my fellow liberal turned into a woke progressive who calls me a bigot because I disagree with him. This is where we are as a country. And this is back in 2021. So 2024, I mean, I am a conservative at this point. <laughs> That's exactly what's taking place in our country. Identity politics, trying to cater to people's feelings and the Democrats I mean, they pushed this country into the into this. And this is not good. We do not need progressive policies. Please take note of this, screenshot this, save this, share it with your friends and your family because it's dead on on what's going on around here. So as I wrap up this video, I want to say this. Uh, Stephen A. Smith, successful, smart, and ignorant at the same time. How can you fear someone you never even had a conversation with? Damn, how is that possible? Especially when you have access to them. You got access. He could he could easily get in touch with Trump. I know that. The number one sports commentator. Yeah, he can. But he won't. Because, again, he's fallen into the identity politics. He's a he's a hypocrite. Oh, no, I don't like that woke stuff. Oh, but you're still voting for the people who created it in the first place. Tell me how that makes sense. It just doesn't. Why can't people exercise common sense like Will Cain? Just do your research. Just like J.D. Vance. Just do your research. See, J.D. Vance's comments in the beginning, you know where they came from? From a place of emotion. I feel, I feel, I feel. But where are the facts? That's the problem. We need to learn how to think for ourselves. And if we can do that, we can get in control of our emotions and get in control of these insecurities and these woke belief systems so they don't control us. And we can look at things with the proper perspective. But hey, that's my mindset about this. What about yours? What do you think about Stephen A. Smith and what he said about President Trump and how scared he is and that he doesn't trust him, that he thinks he's going to start day one being a dictator? But what did you think about Will Cain's response? Did you think it actually had common sense and it was reasonable? And what do you think about that image I showed you about how far left liberals really are in today's world? I want to know what your answers and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay strong, and stay true. Peace.